Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday, 7 p.m. Uh, Bible study of the Praise Cathedral Ministries Church, located here in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Pastor Kim Allen Evans, and being an honor and a privilege to have you to join us and for us in coming to your homes or places of employment or wherever you may be to tell you none other that it is, as we always say, there's no secret what God can do. For what he's done for others, he will turn around and do the same thing for you. For with arms wide open, he will pardon you. It is no secret what God and God alone can do. Uh, it's the day that the Lord has made, and we do rejoice and are glad in it. Uh, even though for maybe you or some of us has been a long day and a very hectic day, but God is still good to us. And we welcome you to come on and join with us today as we... Um, study the word of the Lord together um, and share in fellowship. Once again, it is an honor and privilege that you take time out of your busy schedule and your busy agenda uh, to spend a few moments with us. And it's our prayer that we say and share something that will help build you up and make you stronger and encourage you um, and to, to go on in regardless of what you may be facing to know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When David picked it up and said, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, for he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So as you come on board, let us know that you're here. Once again, glad to see my good brother. Uh, appreciate you joining us um, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis, Brother Fryer, keeping you in our prayer. Uh, and thoughts, um, and as you come on board, once again, just let, it know, let us know that you're here. Um, we appreciate, once again, some of you sacrifice, maybe your dinner time, and uh, like me, uh, around about this time, it's when I watch Big Bang Theory, <laughs> uh, but we just appreciate you coming and joining and being a part of us. We count it an honor and a privilege, and tonight we are studying, uh, still in the book of Colossians. So our lesson is coming from the book of Colossians. Uh, they're in the New, in the New Testament. Uh, and we are walking through our lessons. Uh, last week we gave our introduction. Uh, tonight we're coming from 1 Colossians. We're in verses 9 through 20. So as you get your Bibles, um, or if, if you use a um, tablet or your phone, wherever that you have the Word of God, uh, say that you read and that you meditate. We just actually prepare uh, that scripture. Uh, as always, we go to the throne of grace and we lift up uh, our prayer list um, here at Praise Cathedral Ministries Church. Doctor, how you doing? How you doing, hon? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate you. Tell your sisters and the whole crew over there. I said, hey, miss y'all greatly. Just good people, good people. Hopefully with all this going on with COVID and in your profession, uh, keeping safe and uh, Everybody's working with you. They're in the medical profession. You ain't got no crazy patients or anything else that's been giving you the blues. So we, we pray that, that you be safe uh, in this endeavor. Also, until your daughter and son-in-law and all them, I said, hey, uh, God bless you. Um, so go to my prayer, the prayer list. Um, we have names on our prayer list. Um, and anytime you desire... Um, Prayer uh, on our on our Facebook pray, that page, Praise Cathedral Ministries. All you got to do is send me a message um, or you can just post it there and we'll add you to our list. Uh, and sometimes we add people to the list that uh, I know through my friends' pages and stuff. A lot of times people are uh, asking for prayer and sharing about sick family members and a lot of bereavement, a lot of uh, death has been going on. And so as I see them, I add them to our list. Uh, and we do pray uh, over all of our lessons. So tonight, um, we want to acknowledge, uh, the, let, let those of you know that we are personally praying for you. Uh, good friend of mine, Sister Gretchen Roberts, we went to uh, middle school together and high school together. She just lost her father, I believe it was yesterday. And so we're keeping uh, her and her family in prayer. We're keeping our good friend, Pastor Ron Chun, and your family uh, still in our prayers. A good friend of mine, uh, Sister Von Miles, who lives in Indianapolis. Uh, today was a very challenging day. She, um, her and her family had a uh, service for the passing of her mother. 
So we want to let you know that we are praying uh, for you and we are praying with you um, in these most trying times. Um, we also uh, have on our prayer, uh, Sister Loretta Kidd, keeping you lifted up in prayer. The loss of your mother not that long ago. Uh, we also lift up the Deweese and um, once again, the uh, Eleazar families. I uh, had a... Uh, Mr. Deweese was one of my former teachers in high school, and his, grand, his grandson had a major surgery. And we heard that the surgery was successful, but the recuperation process is still there, so we're still lifting him up for prayer. We're keeping the uh, Wood and the Harvell family still lift up in prayer. Uh, Stache, um, you and Reagan, keeping y'all lifted up. And uh, Bishop S.V. Wood, my good friend and brother. I kind of I, I like talking like him sometimes. Uh, and Sister Deb Wood. Uh, big brother and sister keeping y'all in my prayer I also keep in Elder Abram and Sister Teresa Perry in our prayer uh, Pastor Richard Jordan and the Jordan family keeping you all lifted up in prayer um, we are also uh, lifting up the Foggy family uh, Sister Eleanor Foggy uh, keeping you lifted up prayer all the way there in um, Phoenix, Arizona enjoyed had a great time there uh, not that long ago. Good friends, brother uh, Jimmy and Patty Hargo, they're in Washington Courthouse, keeping y'all both lifted up in prayer. Uh, to the Turner family, uh, the Mack family, the, um, brother Ron, Juan Reeder, uh, his grandmother Kimberly Reeder, and his dad Brandon, wonderful uh, young man who's an old man now, uh, keeping lifted up. Uh, brother Ernest Gates and the whole Gates family. Uh, Patricia Crum, uh, Sister Donna Garn, Sister Norma Goodwin, Minister Alethea Davis, Brother Mike Pittman, Sister Denise Pittman, Brother Alvy Fryer, Brother John Early, uh, Sister Von Hawkins, Brother Marvin Miller Jr., Bishop Marvin Bozeman and his lovely wife, Elder Kimberly Bozeman, Sister Sharon Jenkins, Brother David Reeves, Sister Alva Reeves, Brother Jordan Stewart, Sister Thelma White, Sister Nicole Scott, we like I said, great, wonderful, educated teacher, keeping you lifted up prayer. My good friend and sister all the way there in Wisconsin, uh, Sissy Johnson and Sister Christy Evans. So we, we lift up all these names and as stated, um, anytime you desire prayer, uh, just let us know. You don't have to tell us what the prayer is about or uh, anything like that. And we don't share uh, what the needs are. Those are confidential. But we do want to let you know that we, we do pray for you. We are praying um, for you in general. Um, and so let's just look to the Lord tonight uh, as we go before the throne of grace, before we go into our lesson. So our God and Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. We thank you, sir, for this day, a new day, new mercies, new graces. We thank you for all of your blessings and all those names we lifted, some are going through bereavement, some are going through health challenges, some are maybe going through financial issues and, and personal issues, and some may not have um, issues to say, but they're just asking for prayer. So whatever the situation may be, Lord, we just ask that you would just bless all of the names that are on our list. And we also ask that you bless all of our Facebook friends and family, those who join us and watch us and come with us both live stream and watching their own leisure whatever the need we all stand in need of prayer lord god in need of one thing or another sometimes life itself we're busy trying to do everything we need to do to survive and to live and and our schedules get so overbogged and overburdened sometimes we can wear ourselves out and just just so many different things but you know what we stand in need of lord god and we ask that even on this day there may be something we may have said did or thought on purpose or by accident or not even aware of we ask that you would have uh, mercy on us and forgive us Lord God and we thank you for your kindness and your thoughtfulness to us Lord God and you blessed us with everything that we needed and also blessed us with things that we wanted Lord God and you gave us the ability to pick out all the things that we have in our life Lord God and that's a blessing we don't take that for granted now, God, we come into our lesson this evening. We just pray that, that you unfold it for us, that we may be better people, that we may search our own hearts, our own minds, our own motives, our own intentions, 
Lord God, that we could be better people, as we always say, for you and for ourselves and those that are attached with us. We just thank you for bringing us this far. It wasn't because we've been good or been right. We, Lord knows we did more mistakes and errors and everything else than we did things that are uh, um, good and whatever else, Lord God. But we also know that your word said all of our righteousness is as filthy rags and that even though we may strive to do good things, our goodness cannot compare to your goodness. And so, God, all we can say is thank you. So unfold your word to us tonight and bless us, Lord God, as we study your word, Lord God, that we may become better people than what we were earlier today or yesterday. So thank you. Now, Lord, we simply as we always ask that the words of our mouth and meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining us. We're coming tonight from the book of Colossians. And as you come on board, like I guess said, let us know that you are here. Thank you. Well, glad to know I've been missed. <laughs> appreciate, appreciate it. Amen. Uh, today has just been, uh, this has been like a weird and very hectic day. But um, once again, we, th we thank the Lord that he brought us through and brings us through. And so for that, we say to God be the glory. Uh, let me know. Hopefully y'all can hear, people can hear me. Um, and um, as we share tonight. So we're coming from the book of Colossians, which is in the New Testament. Uh, may not be a book everybody may be familiar with. Um, and we're in chapter one and we're going to be walking through this particular book in its conclusion. And as y'all know, as, as the way I teach lessons, I don't try to rush through stuff. Uh, if we have to take so many verses at a time and do it, so be it. Uh, we're not in no rush to go nowhere uh, throughout the course of our lessons over the next couple of weeks. All right. Um, and so uh, I don't want to go into a lot of historical background on the book of Colossians. For those of you who may want some historical background last week when I went through the introduction from verses one through eight, kind of covered that in detail. Uh, and so tonight I just want to pick up these next couple of verses. Um, uh, to get into our lesson tonight. But one thing, be mindful of the book of Colossians. Uh, this, this letter, this letter is attributed to the Apostle Paul and he's writing to the church uh, of Colossae. That's, that, that's the name of the city. And uh, this church is located in the same uh, geographic location as a lot of the churches, the seven churches that are mentioned in the book of Revelation. And those churches are actually uh, cities and, 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 and locations and they're also conditions of uh, history and also spiritual um, conditions. So when Paul was writing this letter, he's writing it. Um, th there was a, another gentleman who uh, one of his sons helped establish this particular church. And Paul never was able to physically visit there, but he had heard um, of the good reputation of this particular church and the sincerity of the people. But he also had heard that there were a lot of um, false teachings that were trying to creep in and, and not to creep in, but just trying to be pushed in there. Uh, a lot of things that people were trying to add uh, and then take the deity of Jesus and not make him, excuse me, um, being supreme and, and kind of trying to place him like he's almost some kind of equal to, or he was an afterthought and all this other stuff and da, 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 da. And so Paul writes this letter to, to the ch church at, at Colossae. And he writes it also to us because even today, and once again, I say this because of social media and different stuff like that. And we, we respect everybody. Um, but sometimes there's a lot of things, you know, um, that it, it, a good friend of mine, um, I was blessed as a, a kid to sit under um, him in, in a choir. Brother Tommy Adams, uh, who's well known here in the city, around the nation, wrote a famous song that says, everybody don't know who Jesus is. Um, and for a lot of people, a lot of people have different concepts of who Jesus is based on their own understanding. But Paul writes this letter based and he and he's he's, he's telling the church and telling us today who who Jesus is according to who God says he is. Um, and 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 Jesus is just not some apparition or some afterthought or equal to to, to, to Buddha and all this other stuff and conscious thinking and all that. He, he's no. He is, he is Lord of all. And at us as believers, that's, that's our soul foundation right there. We, he's not Jesus and something else attached to it. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. 
He is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. And, and the Bible says before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world was even made, amen, he was the lamb slain before the foundation. So, so Jesus was, 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 was there from the beginning. Amen. He is part of the triune Godhead, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. And it's one, it's one of the attributes, uh, of God himself. So let's go ahead and start reading. We're going to be doing verses nine to 20 tonight. Okay. Um, and once again, you can read in your own leisure verses one through, uh, one through eight. And this is Paul's introduction. And he and he's still writing and he's encouraging um, and and uplifting the believers. So he says, this, and I'm reading from the um, um, contemporary uh, version. I normally try to read from King James, but understand everybody that comes on board may not have King James and different things like that. I love King James personally. The translation, once again, King James did not write the Bible. King James was a published house, and I'm gonna keep saying it every time I have a lesson because these are the Bible is not King James's. In, uh, interpretation okay he just happened to be one of many individuals who over the course of human history took the holy scriptures and was able to write and and compile them in such a way and have them written for everyday people because before that everyday people like you and me were not allowed to handle the word of god or didn't even have the skills to read so they had to rely on priests and whatever else so i, I keep saying that i have to keep saying because a lot of people think that the bible is king james and that King James is writing this based on his, and this, that's not what it is. So he said, because of this, verse number nine, because of this, since the day we heard about you, we haven't stopped praying for you and asking for you to be filled with the knowledge of God's will, with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We're praying this so that you can be, that, excuse me, so that, so that you can live lives that are worthy of the Lord and pleasing to him in every way by producing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God by being strengthened through his glorious might so that you may endure everything and have patience and by giving thanks with joy to the father. He made it so you can take part in his inheritance <clears throat> and by giving thanks with joy to the father. He made it so you can take part in, I'm sorry, I just read that, take part in his inheritance. In light granted to God's holy people, he rescued us from the control of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his son he loves. He has set us free through the son and forgave our sins. The son is the image of the invisible God. The one who was first over all creation, because all things were created by him, both in heaven and on earth. And the things that are visible and the things that are invisible, whether it be thrones or powers or rulers of authority, all things was created through him and for him. We, he existed before all things and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the one who is the firstborn among the dead, so that he might occupy, occupy first place in everything, because all the fullness of God was pleased to live in him. He reconciled all things to himself through him, whether things be of earth or in heavens. He brought peace through the blood of the cross. So what, what, what the apostle Paul is telling the church and telling us today, um, as I said in, in the beginning of verse here, number nine, it's continuation of his formal greeting and his salutations um, that he's writing to the, to the church that's there. And he's, he's telling them, you know, I've heard, I've been hearing about you. You got a good reputation, uh, highly respected um, and how you're striving to, want to know the truth and know what's right. Uh, hey, Sister Reeves, how you doing? I'm going to call you pretty soon. <laughs> glad, glad you joined us. Um, uh, said, uh, he's saying here, you know, I, I've heard about, you know, your goodness. Um, and not goodness like, you know, trying to do everything perfect and, 
you know, trying to be all holy just to make folk happy and please. But he said that your sincerity in your faith and what you believe and what you hold on to, how you treat each other. Uh, he said, he said, he said, I heard these things. And he said, not only that, that, that you desire to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Okay. And with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In other words, he's saying, y'all just don't want to be gathering to do stuff. Y'all want to know what God's will is and what, and the word will means, it means God's purpose, God's desire, uh, God's ultimate outcome, God's ultimate goal. Uh, and not only that, you want to, you want to have wisdom. You know, have wisdom and not just wisdom, then also spiritual understanding. Because, you know, there's a lot of folk who can be wise. They can still, but they don't mean they have spiritual understanding. Okay. You know, uh, there are people who are wise to be uh, manip manipulative and all these other stuff, but they don't have no spiritual understanding. So what Paul was telling them here, he's saying that y'all y'all seeking a balance. You know, you just don't want one thing and say, I got it and I'm gone with it, you know. Or so he's saying they want they want to see they want to know the fullness of of who Christ Jesus is. They want, they want to understand him. And one, and, and one scripture says, Oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. They just don't want little bits and pieces about Jesus. You know, that he just woke me up this morning, started me on my way. That's a wonderful thing. But if he wake you up and start us on our way, what is he starting us on our way to? And why, you know, why does, why did he create us? Why did he give us gifts and talents and all this other stuff? Like when Jeremiah, you know, he told Jeremiah, he said, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. In other words, mean that God created us for a purpose and for, and for a meaning. Um, and in that, we it's in him that we have to learn how to live, move, and have our being. So that's what he's saying here. He's saying that they're striving individually and collectively, amen, to, to want to know God in all of his fullness so that they can be uh, mature. He said in verse number 10, you know, uh, we've prayed uh, this so that you can live lives that are worthy um, of the Lord and pleasing to him in every, in every way. So he's saying here, he said, because I'm hearing this thing, he said, I'm praying for you also so that your life and you'll be able to live a life that is pleasing to God and will be pleasing to God. Um in, in every, and that's the reason why, like I said, you know, when we when we pray for each other, and we we encourage each other, and we have the best interest for each other, it's so that so we can live lives that that have quality, lives that have meaning. You know, you know, it, people live. Everybody that's breathing is living, but not everybody is 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 is, is living um, a life. You know, uh, a lot of people are just existing. I got. I'm I'm gonna be a little transparent. You know, my greatest fear and anguish is just to, to have been placed on this earth just to go through existence. That 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 terrifies me. I just just to be uh, been born and just wake up in the morning and go punch a time clock and come home and watch the news and eat a sandwich and go to bed and do the same thing over and over again without no purpose and no contribution and no dreams and no hope, no aspiration, you know, and no no spiritual desire to want to understand that even in this life is just temporary. There's got to be something more. Um, and so this is what Paul, but this is what Paul said. He said, I've been praying for, um, for, for you. And he's, he's writing this also to us. This letter also applies to us too, is that, you know, that we can live lives that are worthy and pleasing of the Lord, you know, and, and, and I, Sunday I preached, I, I preached from Lamentations chapter three and the message Sunday Encourage you to go back and, and, and listen to it. It's not it, it was no leftovers today. Um and and that that sermon topic came from uh the scripture. It is of the Lord's mercies we're not consumed. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. But before he said that, he he jumped up a couple of verses and says, you know, this I call to remembrance. You know, therefore I have hope. And 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 the thing about it is that. You know, we, we want to try to live our lives to be worthy of the Lord. And I, once again, I don't mean you, you trying to walk on water and all this other stuff. I know you hear me say this all the time. Be able to cross every T and dot every I and all that. But at least strive to be sincere enough, even in our mistakes, even in our misjudgments, even in our errors, even in our blatant whatever, be able to come back and say, Lord, you know, have mercy and forgive me because we don't want to get comfortable doing things in such a way that we don't want to be worthy of God's blessings and worthy of God's love. Now, here's the thing. He makes us worthy. 
we don't make ourselves worthy by trying to do everything as, how can I say, because it may sound kind of like an oxymoron to an extent. But the way we make ourselves striving to be worthy is striving to try to please him and, and learn about him and grow in him. And then it is in him that we become worthy. We're not worthy. I'm not worthy. You're not worthy because of just who you are. You'd be the nicest person in the world. That's wonderful. That's great. That's reasonable service. We ought to strive to do that. But as I just quoted a few seconds ago, Isaiah said, you know, even all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Now, somebody may say, what in the rules does that mean? That sounds kind of cold. In other words, saying out of the good things we do in and up of ourselves, by ourselves, it can never compare to the purity, the richness, the beauty, the splendor of God's goodness. OK, so therefore we but we ought to strive to try to do the best we can. But understand that even in our righteousness alone, I think that's a hymn, you know, uh, I, uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. All Christ is solid rock of sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And then there's a verse in there about, you know, our own righteousness. Uh, if we try to put our own righteousness in the place of God's righteousness, then it'll never, it'll never measure up. So that's what he's saying. He, that's what he's praying, that the people will always be, that we will always be dependent and striving to try to please the Lord, regardless if folk like it, don't like it, understand or whatever else. And even if it's once again, you know, there's there's a lot of times it's not comfortable for us, you know, um, but through 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 all of this. And we'll read later on in this particular book, you know, there's a battle that goes on and, and one side got to supersede over the other. And so he said that he said and he said. And here's the thing. By producing fruit. In every good work and growing in the knowledge of the Lord. So once again, production to produce some. Hey, Sister Hicks, how you doing? Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so he's saying here that that when we do it, we ought to be able to produce something. You know, to, to you go back to the Garden of Eden. You know, he put them there to do what? To be fruitful and multiply. Now, fruitful and multiply just don't mean to have a whole bunch of babies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't mean that. It just means what you put your hands to do. There ought to be some residual effects that happen that not only blesses you, but blesses those that are around you and blesses those that come after you. OK, so that's what that's what being fruitful means. Just like this, you know, you you eat an apple. you got that little seed in it, you know, but you put that seed in there, that one seed in the ground and let that that tree mature and grow. It's, is it going to produce just one apple? It's going to produce multiple apples. And is it just going to produce apples one time? Every season is going to keep producing, it's going to keep producing because of that one, um, that one seed or that one thing that was done. So that's what he's saying here. He's telling, he's telling the church at, 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 at Colossae and he's telling us today that, that when we pray for each other, um, is that, that we be, that we also produce fruit in every good work, in every good work and growing knowledge of God. So once again, you know, if any have been in, 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 and I say church, church, which is the body of Christ, not the building, but the body of Christ, there ought to be, there ought to be growth. All of us, you know, and it don't mean you, you know, every scripture. It don't mean you know how to pray prayers until you pray until the, the rafters fall down and all that. Uh, no, but, but we ought to have enough knowledge about us, about God in such a way that there's certain things over a course of time don't phase us. That used to phase us, you know, um, and things that, that, that can't be stripped away from us. So that's what he's saying here. Uh, knowing, growing in the knowledge of God and by being strengthened through his glorious might that and he's saying not once again, producing, having knowledge, having wisdom, knowing his will, having spiritual understanding. But then he also says also by being in verse number 11, by being strengthened through his glorious Glorious means awesome, spectacular. It's beyond words. It's just beyond description. I mean, it's like, wow. It's his glorious might. His might means his power, his strength. So that you endure everything and have patience. And Lord knows today, and this applies to all of us, uh, and some may be a little bit more seasoned than some of us, um, but, you know, you, you know, I, you know, watching the news and a lot of stuff, it's, you know, um, and I'm not saying it's degrading or anything. I have background uh, 
several backgrounds, but uh, one of the areas I used to work in, in social services and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and today, because of COVID and the isolation and all that, you know, a lot of people are talking a lot more about mental health and people on the verge of mental collapse and all of this other stuff, you know, mental because things, the pressures, you know, just the, the mindsets, just playing with their minds, um, just where you are. And that happens to us too. You know, we all have things, you know, um, today was just, everything was coming at me like this, like this, 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 this. and I was blessed to have a um, gentleman that works with me. Uh, he came into my office and I was just, I was just mentally drained and he, Wonderful, wonderful guy. He's from another country, and his perspective on life is just awesome. And he's, he's seen how I look and how you doing. And this is what he said to me. He said to me, he said, are you alive? And I was like, yeah, yeah. He said, that's enough. And, you know, and then he went on about his day. And then I went to his office, and me and him sat down and talked. And he just kind of let me, you know, release some things and whatever. But but that had that kind of had that kind of connection, you know, because of the fact that, you know, uh, sometimes when we go through things, you know, um, especially in our society, you know, a lot of times people tell, you know, as men, men are not supposed to show their emotions and whatever else. And, and, you know, you ain't supposed to do this. And, and, and you know, they, well, they say that for anybody, you ain't supposed to cry. You ain't supposed to get upset. And we bottle all that stuff in. We bottle it in because we don't, we're not given a license or being respected to share our emotions. And what happens? High blood pressure, uh, migraine headaches. We, our physical body begins to suffer because it's psychological and the psychological effects are spiritual, you know. Um, and yes, that that hymn, you know, what a friend in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. But then also the scripture tells us also that we, we have to learn how to bear one another's burdens. You know, we that are, are strong you know, or, or you may be strong today, you may have to help carry the load for somebody who's weak, you know, because there come a time we may be weak and we need somebody to help carry the load for us, a confidant or somebody to share and all. So this is what Paul was saying right here. You know, even this day, even through the glorious might. And, and, and when I say this, once again, the way that God works, he don't, he don't jump down out the sky and all. He works through us. He works through people. He works through us. I, I, I think I said this a a, a couple of lessons ago, weeks ago, a couple months ago, um, is, is, is the fact that, you know, God gives all of us different callings and different gifts, you know, I, I, okay. I'm Reverend Evans at Praise Cathedral Ministries. When I'm at work, I'm not there in the pastoral capacity, well, even though maybe I got some, I got some people call me, <laughs> but I don't tell them that, you know, but you know, uh, when we in different different arenas, but when God puts a calling on us or gives us a gift, some people have the gift of compassion. Now, in the Bible says we all have to be compassionate, but there's some people who can feel people's pain and people can share with them and know that it's in a safe place. You know, there are some people that have the gift of wisdom. You know, they can sit down and share and share things with folk in a way that nobody else can do. You know, some people have the, 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 the gift of of you know, bringing joy, you know, I know some folk that no matter how down they get, I mean, they find a way to laugh through things. They have, they had their little moments. They had their moments now, but those, those moments don't supersede those moments where they bring more joy. I mean, it's just amazing how God uses all of us and all of our different gifts. That's just why we should never have to feel competitive because somebody may have something that may be more, may have a bigger audience, you know, um, Sometimes God will bless us to be able to be able to deal with somebody one on one. I'm kind of an oxymoron. I don't mean to talk about me, but for me, I can get in front of a large group of people and I can talk and do it. and I'm totally at ease. But sometimes when it's just like one or two people or whatever, my family can kind of tell you this. I'm kind of like real reserved and real quiet. Yeah. Hard to believe that. But, but you know, sometimes God gives us all these different gifts, all these different talents. Like I said, some of y'all may be good at cooking. Sister Reeves, pound cake, okay, <laughs> you know, and and that through your cooking can can build up somebody's spirit. You know, that's just right around the you know when you always have food, people's attitudes change. You know, um, because people are relaxed and whatever else. People have that gift and tap. You know what I mean? You know, so it's just so diversified. So this is what Paul was saying here. You know, and to, so we could be able to endure uh, uh, all these different things and have patience. 
you know, and patience is not a convenient thing. Patience is not a comfortable thing. Okay. Uh, the old saying, patience is a virtue. It's a learned attribute. And that learned attribute comes through a whole lot of stuff. And, uh, and uh, you know, but patience, you know, gives us the ability to be able to wait on some things, to wait on things. And not just wait in there hypothetically like, okay, whatever, whatever. But in the process of waiting, we begin, he'll begin to reveal and unfold different things. And we, be, as, as we just said here in a couple of verses before, you know, we get closer to him and get drawn closer to him if we allow that to happen. That's why the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. And he said, he keeps on talking. And by giving thanks with joy to the Father. So he's, he's listening to all these things. These are the things that Paul said, I heard about y'all. All these good, wonderful things. Y'all like praising the Lord. Y'all give God the glory and the honor and the praise. And Once again, you have patience. And y'all y'all seeking to know his will. And you're seeking to have spiritual understanding. You're seeking to have wisdom. You're praying for one another. You're building each other up. Y'all producing. Y'all just ain't giving lip service. But you got some, you got some evidence behind what you're doing. And you know, and, 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 you know, you're strengthening, you know, you're, you're just doing all the things, um, um, that, that you need to through, that you need to do through, through the, uh, um, uh, relying on God to be your source. And he said, he goes on to say, and he made, um, it, uh, he made it so for you could take part in the inheritance in the light granted to God's holy people. What he's talking about here is his inheritance. Okay. Because while we're in, while we're, what we have to understand is that when we accept Christ, he saves us and keeps us um, to, do, to do his will. Sorry about that. I don't know why people, nobody's supposed to call me during this time period. Um, to do his will. Um, and when we do his will, it's not hypothetical. He's got things set up for us. He's got things laid out for us, both in this life and in the life to come. So an inheritance basically means, everybody know what inheritance is. For those of you who don't know what it means, it means that somebody else worked for something, labored for something, set something up so that when they leave, those that follow behind them that are attached to them will reap the benefits. That's just right here in the United States of America. We got all of this. You got the families like the Rockefellers. You hear name like the Vanderbilts. Um, and all these conglomerations and all this other stuff because there were people generations before who amassed wealth and mass land and all this other stuff and left things for their descendants uh, to live off of. And so that's what he's saying here. Now he's using this because there's also a divine inheritance. God, through Jesus Christ, left an inheritance. Remember we talk about, we hear the scripture all the time in funerals. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. And that scripture is not just for funerals. That, fu that, that scripture is reminding all of us that even while we are still living on this side of life, don't let our hearts get so discouraged. And it happens. Let's just be honest. It, it happens because life does that. But he's saying that when it happens, remember this. Don't let your heart be so troubled in such a way that you forget that in your father's house, he said, in my father's house, there is many mansions, there is room, there is space, there is resources, there is blessings, there's everything you need. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I, I don't want you following me and just thinking that there's not something in here for you because of your, your love towards me and your sacrifice. And here it is, if, if I'm your father and I'm your God. I've got, I've got some stuff set up for you on this life, but then also in the life to come. He said, my father has so many mansions. Where not so I told you. He said, I got to go. I'm going to prepare a place for who? For you. And he says, he says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you're going to be there also. And then, you know, they didn't understand the, the, the meaning behind it or whatever. And they trying to figure out whatever. And then, and then one of the disciples says, well, Lord, we don't know the way. We don't know where you're going. And we've seen you do all this stuff, but we still don't understand because in their natural mind, and that's the reason why, like I said, you know, in our natural mind, our natural mind can get so, you know, discombobulated or it's very narrow, okay? Because we as just natural humans operate with our five senses, a see, hear, smell, taste, touch. I think that's all five of them. Um, and God, and Jesus was talking about, no, there's, there's something else that you can't see. 
with the natural eye. Even Apostle Paul talked about, it. he said, there's, there's things that eyes have not seen, ears not heard. And, he's, and he tells him, he said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So he's saying, I got an inheritance, but this inheritance, you just can't, you don't get it any old kind of way. Another thing about inheritance is this. They leave a last, what's called a last will and testament. And then the attorney or whoever, paralegal, somebody has to read the will and the stipulations for the will. Because you can be in the family. That don't mean you automatically in that will. It depends on who the benefactor puts in there. Okay. And it's based on it's based on the benefactor's conditions, not the recipient's conditions, but the benefactor's conditions. So this is what he's saying here about that you're going to partake in inheritance because God has already put an inheritance for those that love him and those that look forward to him. Once again, go back to that scripture. I just got through quoting that Paul said, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts, the imaginations, the mindset, the philosophies of men. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. In our wildest imagination, I always think about that little movie, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Y'all remember that movie? You know, and they went inside the, the Chocolate Factory and had all those little, those plants, man, all the candy and whatever. It just, you know, went beyond imagination and all this other stuff. So that's kind of a, you know, fairy tale type thing. But you, you can't describe the splendor of it and glory and all these other things. But... We have hope. And that's what Paul talks about here. He says, in the light granted to God's holy people. And it's not for everybody. Okay? Everybody talks about heaven ain't going there. Okay? It's not a resort. Okay? It's not a, you can't get a Groupon ticket for it. <laughs> okay? You know, it, 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 it's, it's a prepared place for a prepared people. Okay? And that's what he says here. He says, and, it's, and, and granted to God's holy. Holy means separated, set apart. Uh, it don't mean you live in a commune somewhere and all this other stuff. It means that people have made up in their hearts and minds that they want to strive to try to do what they got to do to please God and to love God and do what God has told them to do. According to what God says in his standard, not based on people's opinions and everything else. Because he'll go on later on Colossians and talk about you know, folk come in there and try to sway and do all this other stuff and whatever else. But he said it's granted to God's holy people and who God calls holy is holy. OK. Uh, and so sometimes we are trying to do stuff to make other folk understand and other folk comprehend, trying to prove a point. Uh, but you no. Know. And he said, and here's the thing. He rescued us from in verse number 13. He rescued us from the control of darkness. And then transferred us unto the kingdom of the son that he loves. Or in your Bible, it may say his dear son. Uh, and he has set us free through the son and forgave our sins. So what he, he said here, he did all this stuff because he found fit. And he saved us and he rescued us from darkness. Okay. He saved us from darkness. And then translated us or, or placed us. Took us from this point to this point. Uh, Peter says, who brought us out of darkness into the light called marvelous. And 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 in the kingdom of the son that he loves. In other words, into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ himself that he loves. And Jesus is God's only begotten son. He don't have no other sons. He don't have no other daughters in regards to to being the sacrifice and the propitiation of for our sins. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no equal to it. I know everybody may not agree with that statement, but as for me and my house, that's what I believe and that's what I stand on. Because the scripture says is here that Jesus Christ is the sole means and the sole way uh, to get to God. He set us free through Jesus Christ and forgave our sin. That's why Jesus came on the scene once again. A lot of people think he just showed up in the last minute. Before the foundation of the world, Jesus, God had already knew that man would need a redeemer. And you hear me talk about uh, uh, um, dispensations. That's a word that means time periods. And when you read the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelations, there are seven dispensation period time periods of how God dealt with man based on, on the way that God wanted to deal with man. So when you read about 
uh, Adam and Eve. That's this dispensation of human innocence. He dealt with Adam and Eve one way. And then you had human consciousness when they ate that forbidden fruit and their so-called minds got expanded that they thought um, and began to uh, sin. They disobeyed God because God says, don't touch the tree. You know, he said, I gave you everything here. And he put the, and he had the tree sitting right there. They knew what the tree looked like. They knew what the fruit looked like and everything else. He didn't, he didn't put a brick wall up and all that other stuff. But once again, I use this analogy, you know, just like, you know, when we were kids or maybe those of you who had kids, you, you in your house, you're like, I ain't locking that up and I ain't putting this away. If you don't respect this, then you're going to take the consequences for it. Okay. Um, and so that's what God did. And so when they ate that, the issue was they disobeyed God because God told them not to do it. And then they listened to some strange creation. That wasn't even God and told him, well, that's not what he really meant. That's not what he said. And that's what happens today. And that's why Colossians, when we get later into this, we'll find out that's what Paul's warning about. Because a lot of folks come to, well, that's not what God really meant. That's not what God really said. And that's not, you know, and you got to look at it like this. You got to look at it like that. And then, you know, and a lot of times these people saying that don't even know the true scriptures themselves or may not even have the Holy Spirit to decipher the scriptures. Okay. Because sometimes you can take philosophy and whatever else just because, and I'll say this also, just because a person go to seminary. That don't mean they, they've been born again. That don't mean they have the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, we, we study theology. We study something called eschatology, which means the study of the end times. And you study anthropology and geology and all these other things. But that don't necessarily mean a person has the Spirit of God in them. Okay? To be able to rightly divide the word and give divine inspiration to the word. Then also allow the Holy Spirit to speak with utterance and revelations and clarifications that can take us to another level. Once again, this is a beautiful book written of history. It's poetry. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's prophecy and all that. But it's all through the divine revelation through the Holy Spirit. So that's what makes this book different than reading what, which I read them, Harlequin Romances. <laughs> you know, you read them, you know, the Book of the Month Club. And, you know, that's what makes this, this, this particular book Different than reading a novel and, and reading a mystery or something like that. You know, the Bible is God's living word translated. And God said this. God said this. God said he, it, it, he, every scripture is given through the inspiration for reproof. And then he said in Revelations, one of the last things he said in Revelations, he said, if anybody add anything to it or if anybody takes out anything from this book, and the book, basically, the words that he said, because these words are just not words, these words are who he is. This is him. He's the word. In the beginning was the word. Read John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, that we may behold the only begotten of the Son, full of grace and full of truth. So when we read his word, we're just not reading printed a printed book goes back to what I said earlier about King James Version. How people try to discredit that. Whoever wrote, because they're still making they're still making different translations of Bible based on people's understanding and it, reading ability. That's what the reason I got these different translation for different people's reading ability, uh, so they can understand uh, the basic reading itself. But through it all, the Holy Spirit is what gives us understanding, and gives us revelation. That, that's the reason why I can't sit here and say these are my words. I'm reading. What the word says, and he's called he's called me and, and and several others for whatever reason, don't know why, to be able to do certain things with his word for people. And just like he's giving each one of you, you may not preach in a pulpit or anything like that, but he's giving you the ability to share your word with your friends, with your family, with your children, you know, in, in different things. Because what happens is his word is alive. That's why when we read the word and study the word. It becomes alive in our lives because it's just not printed paper, but they are the living words of God himself. And everybody can't understand it. it goes back to what I said earlier. God's people understand this, but just everyday folk. And that's just why everybody, everyday folk can't understand and respect uh, what God is, is saying. And it, and it may not be for everybody um, to understand and accept. Uh, because once again, we all make choices of what we want to adhere to, what we want to believe, what we want to grasp onto. And so as we get ready to wrap this up, these last couple of verses, he breaks it down even more. Now he gave all this greeting to us. And then now in these last verses that we're going to read tonight, 15 through 20, he's great. And he's great. Tell us all of that is because of this. He said, the son is the image of the invisible God. Verse 15. 
the one who was first over all creation because all things were created by him both in the heavens and the heavens means the galaxy the firmament that's above the earth regardless past solar systems and everything else okay and the earth we, we live on the earth. I know we're trying to put people on Mars and the moon and everything else. We ain't done it so far. Our dominion is here. So he's the Lord of this planet, this earth. So everything on this earth, he breaks down even more. The things that are visible, things we can see, the things that are invisible. Hmm. And he's talking about things that are invisible because every molecule, every atom, every virus, every bacteria, all this stuff has its place and has its perfect purpose he created all of that he created everything even even how our bodies operate and don't you know we got things living on the inside of us to help us digest our food and everything else okay yeah read some of the science stuff it's kind of fascinating uh he, and he goes on to say whether they be thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him he existed before all things and all things were held together in him i'm gonna go back here to this this little verse um when he talks about kings rulers once again, every king, every potentate, every person who has political power or power of authority over people going to have to answer to God. Every, every Pharaoh, every Caesar, uh, every president, you know, that's just why um, when you read the Bible, you read about uh, Nathan, you read about Elijah and Elisha. Uh, Samuel and all these these people, they stayed in those kings' face. They went through. They went. Moses went to Pharaoh, you know, and the preachers and the prophets always addressed directly the 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 the, the, the uh, legislation of of the people because once again they are they are ministers over the well being and the care of the people. And when that's abused and whatever else, God's gonna hold them accountable. And God's going. He's always going to send somebody or some folk to speak to them. In a way, that's going to convict them. I, I preached about Jeremiah Sunday. Jeremiah had to stand before the king, and God told him, tell him, they, they're going in captivity. Y'all going, going to be locked up. Y'all going to spend 70 years in Babylon because y'all kept playing with me. And he went and told the king. The king got mad at him and threw him in a cesspool, threw him down in a hole, in a, a filthy, stinking hole in the ground, and told him, you, you better not preach nothing like that. I don't want you to ever come in my, in my throne room, in my chamber, uh, my uh, whatever else, around dig dignitaries and things. You can talk to me like that and whatever. And Jeremiah was down there. He was mad and upset. And he, he embarrassed and felt like it was all in vain. He was, But then God touched his heart and stirred that fire up in him. And Jeremiah says, it's like fire shut my bone. And when they brought him out, he went back before the king, and the king said, you got something to say? Jeremiah said, I'm going to say the same thing I said before. I ain't going to change my word. I ain't going to recant. I ain't going to back down. Elijah the same way. He stood before Je uh, uh, Jezebel and Ahab, two of the most evilest folk ever walked on, on the earth, and told him, he said, you may, be, you may think you king and queen. He said, I got the power. I can make, the, I can make it stop raining. He said, it won't rain until I tell it to rain. And they thought he was joking, and he didn't say nothing. He, didn't, he said, it ain't going to rain for three years, and it didn't rain either. You know, and that's the power. That's the power when God gives uh, preachers, not all preachers. Let me take that back. Not all preachers. But for those who have that, they can say things and speak things um, that that God backs up or God tells them to say. And they're not comfortable. They're not convenient just to show that God worked. Because here's the thing. The Bible says God put this treasure in earthen vessels. He put it inside of us. He put he puts his Holy Spirit inside of us. Um to do the things that he wants to do. And it's not based upon uh, us or, or whatever else, but it's based upon us wanting to be available for him to use us. And it's not a comfortable thing. It's not a fun thing. It's a very scary thing because many times you spend many a sleepless night and you have many a burden because there are things that go on. And sometimes you have to be, you have to kind of be careful how you word things because some folk, everybody don't like uh, things a certain way, you know, but you still got to say what's, what's got to be said because it's his word. Because if if we don't say what God says, we're going to be held accountable. We're going to have blood on our hand. And so God takes very, very serious these things. And so that's what he says here. So kingdoms, when people, when governments abuse people, whatever, once again, 
I keep saying this. Folk talking about folk get away. They got away with it and talk about somebody proceeded. And God, God has a way. God, God, they may think they get away in this life, but there's something called eternity. I'm going to keep on saying that. They were created. Uh, uh, governments and stuff were created by him so that people can have order and have structure and be able to live together in a civil manner. Whether they do or not, God still has that standard and everybody's going to give an account of what they do with it. He existed in verse 17 as we close this out. He existed before all things and all things are held together by him. Whoo! Everything was created by him. Everything. And he holds everything. I know people say the world's falling apart and this is falling apart and whatever else. And I know, Well, according to our standard, some things may be. But the last time I looked, the sun still rising in the east sits in the west. Am I right about it? Winter. A man follows fall. Am I right about it? The spring follows that this summer. The flowers still bloom like they're supposed to. The trees still close up or drop leaves or, or bud where they're supposed to. Okay? The rivers still flow the way they're supposed to. The clouds still do what they're supposed to do. We the only ones have an issue. We the only ones out of order. We the only ones out of structure and whatever else. So everything's held together by him. Think about this. The oxygen. That we breathe and don't think nothing of. But if somebody have an oxygen tank and they smoke a cigarette, can blow up the whole house. That's kind of deep, ain't it? We drink water. Same water been here since the beginning of time. Not no new water. It's the same water. Same water dinosaurs drunk and, and everything, everybody else. Water evaporates, turns into a gas, and turns into a liquid, turns into a solid. How can we explain how, how does the how does the Mississippi the Mississippi River get to the Gulf of Mexico and turn into salty water? You think about this. So everything's held together. Everything's even us. We're held together. On a personal note, think about the times you went through stuff and you knew you was going to fall apart. And the only person that could the only person only power that held you together was God, because you belong to Him. So therefore, he holds all things together, even the chaos and the madness, because he already said it in his word that in the last days, perilous times should come. And he breaks that thing down. And it's because men, people don't want to accept him or do what's right. So God said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it even happened. And the problem is we don't like reading about it. We don't like acknowledging some of this stuff happened. We get surprised. God is like, I done told y'all. And lastly, he is the head of the body. He's the head of the church, the body of Christ. That's what he's coming back for. He's coming back for his church, not the building. The building is, is what we buy, what we rent to come together as the church in a unified effort to identify together, to worship together. But he's coming back for the his body, his bride. And that's what God says. He said, you're so precious that, that he's in love with us, that he's going to be married to us as a bride. Okay. So we are, we are the church who in the beginning, who is the beginning? He is the beginning. The firstborn, firstborn from among the dead. In other words, when Jesus died and rose, he did not die no more. We read about Lazarus. Three days. Lazarus stayed in the sick and in that grave, decaying and God called him for, but Lazarus died again. Okay. Jairus' daughter, she died. Died on, in, that, in that room and Jesus put him out and he grabbed her by the hand and said, damn, so I said, right. She got up, but later on in life, she passed away. That woman on her way to the cemetery and Jesus was passing by in that funeral procession and stopped the funeral directors and, and put his hand on that casket. And that boy popped up out that casket and went back home with his mother, but he died. Jesus is the only person in bodily form. Who died and rose and ain't going to die no more. He became the atonement for all of our sin. And it's through him, through his blood. And once again, that's what makes him different than Buddha and Muhammad and all these other folk that they try to compare him to. Them folks still in their, still in the graves. They still, they have fun. He's the only one. The tomb is empty. He spoke and the stone rolled back. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though I was dead, I am alive forevermore. I'm Alpha, I'm Omega, I'm which, I'm, I'm God, which is, which was, and which is to come. 
And he's going to be the very guy that when time ends, he's going to have one foot on the sea and one foot on the, on the ground. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue going to confess. Even folk who said, I don't even believe in him. That's a bunch of hogwash and all this other stuff. He ain't no, no, no. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue going to confess. I can't prove it. I just believe it. And I just want to hope I'll be on the opposite end that when I say Jesus is Lord, I ain't forced to say it. But I say it because I say it freely because I know that he is and he is in my life. And lastly, I, I know I keep saying that, but I'm going to wrap this up because I'm going to get kind of excited here. I wasn't preparing it, but this was just, this is just good. Because of all the fullness of God. Mm, because all the fullness of God was pleased to live in. in. In your Bible says, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is the complete manifestation of the totality of God himself. Ain't three folk fl flying around up in the heavens. Just one. Just one. And he reconciled. He brought, brought chaos and brought order back. He's going to bring order back. He's brought order back to himself and through himself. Because there was nobody else that can do what he did. He had to do, he did it all by himself. The angels couldn't do it. The prophets couldn't do it. All the wonderful people we read about in the Bible, all the wonderful folk in our families that we think so much, nobody could do what he did. He did it himself and through his own self. That, that's the reason why he has all power. That's why he's Lord. And where the things on earth or in heaven, he brought peace through the blood of the cross. And that's the thing. The cross is what makes the difference. He died on that cross. That old piece of splintered up, broken up, unshaved wood. They nailed him to that cross. The most horrific way to die because that death when he died to Rome to die on the cross was, was to say you was a you, you was treason you was an enemy of the state and to the Jews it was an open sign that you are a blasphemer so the Jews and the Gentiles us he died for all of us that he died in such a way. The only person you know who preaches you know who preaches eulogy. He ain't no preachers there preaching you. There's disciples except for John. Everybody ran and left and was hiding. The only people at his feet was, was his mother and John, the youngest disciple. The very man who drove the spikes in his feet and in his hands and put a spear in his side. When he seen the, the sun black out and the moon disappear. And the earth was covered with darkness from 9 a.m. from the 9th to the 6th hour in the morning when the sun was always shining bright. And he looked up and said, surely this man was the son of God. Sometimes even the enemies will have to acknowledge who God really is. So we hope we got something out the lesson tonight. We'll pick the rest of this up next week. And just these, these, these few verses... Just these few verses. This is what Paul was saying all of this here. And it says it us even today as the church. Because once again, we get we get bombarded, bombarded with a whole lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff got Jesus' name attached to it. And it ain't got nothing to do with Jesus the Christ. Because there are several other Jesus in history. And even as we as believers today, there's a lot of stuff going on in his name. It's just, oh, jeez. 15, 20 years ago, it, stuff we just wouldn't tolerate. Now we sit there and it's like, we know it's wrong. And we just sit there and let folk do all kind of whatever, whatever. And in the midst of it all, what does the scripture say about who, who God says he is? Not who we think he is. Or because somebody's popular, we like their opinions and their philosophies. So we'll pick the rest of this up. We'll be picking the rest of this up. We pray that this, this lesson tonight, as I stated, as I get it, you get it. It's time for me to get ready to get up out of here. I'm getting up out of here. Appreciate your time with us. We pray that this lesson was a blessing to you. That something was said, something was done. Uh, that was a blessing to you. Because as I, I'm going to be honest with you, as I was getting it, I'm giving it to y'all. So it, it, it applies 
back this way also. We thank y'all for just joining us uh, and for being a, a part of us. Um, if you desire to be a blessing uh, to us, um, our Facebook page, um, you can go to GiveLify, a little mobile app, uh, and follow the little steps. And um, just hit Praise Cathedral Ministries. You'll see our logo, and you'll see my little mugshot pop up in there also. Um, but if you, if you just want to be a financial blessing to us, we greatly appreciate it. We are blessed to have a facility that we can worship at on Sundays uh, due to COVID. I just want people to be safe personally, and hopefully soon we'll be uh, opening up um, for folk. Um, once again, I didn't inherit anything. I, you know, kind of building from the ground up. And uh, sometimes if you don't hear it stuff, you know, sometimes people kind of apprehensive along the way. But I do praise the Lord for this opportunity, this venue to be able to share uh, the word of God. And as we begin to grow and thrive even more, um, we just want to be a blessing to you. So you can go to Give Lafay and whatever you want to give. It could be one time or if you want to be a, a blessing to us on a regular basis, whatever the Lord is on your heart. We also have the cash app because some folk don't want to use uh, are not familiar using GiveLify, maybe too many steps for some people. Everybody in tech savvy, uh, but a lot of people say they have Cash App. Or if you just want to be a blessing to us, uh, you know, drop something in the mail. Our mailing address is, is on our Facebook page also. And we will give you proper acknowledgement of the gifts that you do give. Uh, our, our goal is we're you know, actually trying to build and, and, and do some things. Um, but I appreciate you. Uh, all of you that join uh, every week or whenever you're able to join, you have made an impact in my life, been a blessing to me. I uh, know each one of you personally. Um, those that's joining now live may watch later on. I want to tell you you've been a blessing to me, and I pray I've been some kind of blessing to you. If not, I pray I've been some kind of nice entertainment for you at times. <laughs> but but just, just, just thank you for being good, and we're keeping all of you um, lifted up in prayer. Uh, also during this week, we don't know what we're going to face. It's like every time you turn on the news and everything else stuff's going on, our young people and our people are just going crazy because they don't have nothing on the inside. They don't seem to make no excuses. Um, murders, killing, stealing, breaking cars, doing stuff, just, just chaotic, crazy. And, um, I'm, I'm just going to say it's a time, time which we live. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Um, so it gives us a lot to pray about uh, and be sober and be aware. So I just pray all of you have a safe week, have a, have a, have a good week. And as we leave from this place, uh, our coming together online, let us always be mindful of never leaving from God's presence. And it's our prayer that you have a good week, a blessed week, a safe week, a prosperous week, not only you, but also your family and everything that's attached to you. So as we close out, Let's just close out with a word of prayer. Um, I actually invite you to join us on Sundays at 1245 p.m. for our live stream service. We thank you when you do join us. We are utilizing our Facebook page more so than my personal page. Um, so once again, thank you. If you desire prayer, as we stated, just drop me a note or just put something on there and we will add you to our prayer list. And as our prayer list is posted, whether you know the person or not, say a prayer for the individuals that are on our prayer list. Uh, because once again, in these times, we really, we, we really need to pray for one another. So let's look to the Lord. Our God and Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, sir, for this day, for your goodness, your love, your mercy, for the space and this time. Some are tired in body, some are tired in mind, but we thank you. We pray something was said and done that will build all of us up. Thank you for being kind and for being wonderful. Thank you for, again, new mercies. No leftovers today, Lord God, for your grace and your love and your mercy. So every person that's joined me that will watch in their own free time, wherever they may be at, bless them, keep them, hold them, Lord God, as only you know how to hold them and sustain them in their families, Lord God, in their communities, Lord God, and whatever they may need. Bless all of their resources and the sources, Lord God, that are pleasing in your sight. So God, as we always pray, keep us in the hollow of your hand. Keep us as the apple of your eye. And we know that between now and then, we may say or do something, think something, may be caught at the end of a situation that may have be a misunderstanding or whatever else. Give us grace. Give us sensitivity to stop and say, I'm sorry. Have mercy. Forgive me. Amen. That somebody may see your goodness in us and give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. So thank you for your love, your mercy, your sense of humor. 
We thank you for your hand of provision. We thank you for your hand of healing in Jesus' name. So bless us and we know that we're blessed. Keep us and we know that we are kept. And God, watch between me and all of these while we're absent one from another till we come back together again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good one. Have a blessed one. Amen. In Jesus' name, take care. Peace out. Bye-bye.